What? <laughs> Just because of you? No, no, no. That's your right. I always check the video. Okay. Yeah. You can see the view point of the YouTube. So I don't know who was the view. One of the last views, five or just five or six. One of them is. So then uh, another difference is time. Some people are patient and some people are impatient. Are you patient or impatient? Impatient. Hmm? Patient. Impatient. We have a saying in uh, in English: patience is a virtue. Have it if you can. Always in a woman, never in a man. Do you understand that saying? Do you think women are more patient than men? Yes? Maybe that's why men don't work in the kindergarten. <laughs> when, when I was 21, I worked with the very small kids. But I'm not that patient, so I wasn't good with the small kids. Did you ever watch the movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger? When he's in, working in the kindergarten? It was like me, right? Anyway, if you give out to the kids or complain, they're just going to do again five minutes later because yeah. they're just kids and they don't understand properly, right? So you have to be very patient. Right? You can't lose your temper with the small children because they, it's not their fault. Right? So usually we find women doing that kind of job, right? They're more patient. So in you guys studied before about the time value money and the discount rate, the hurdle rate. Right? So money is worth more in the future, or worth more now than it is in the future, right? But some people might have a different discount rate than another person. And we're going to look at an example. So, basically we have to match the payments and benefits received to the relative time preferences. Some people will prefer to get the payment and benefit now, some people prefer to get the payment and benefit later. Okay, so the impatient partner, party should get greater returns earlier and the patient party should be compensated more generously later. That's how we can manage the time, differences in time. So let's look at this example. We have a venture capital group. Do you understand venture capital? Yeah. Right. They are giving the early round financing to a biotechnology firm which is now seeking additional financing. The biotech firm contacted a large European company that was impressed with the small firm's technology. So let's say it's a Korean company, right? So the, your, let's say a Swiss company. Swiss company is impressed with your technology. They want to make, make a big investment. The European company thinks this is a good investment for its company because it doesn't have any biotechnology business. It's a pharmaceutical company. So it wants to build a biotechnology brand. So it thinks that 10% re projected rate of return is okay. Right? Because it's diversifying into biotechnology industry, that's an advantage. So it will accept a 10% rate of return. Okay? On the other hand, the venture capitalists who gave the money at the very start, right? Your father's friends. <laughs> Gave you the money at the very start to start your company. Uh, then they they think they want a thirty-five percent rate of return. Usually, venture capitalists—they're not there for the long, maybe not for the long term. They want to find somebody with a good idea, get the profit quickly at the start, big profit at the start, because they invested in a lot of companies, so they lost money in some companies. They need to make big return to get back their investment, right? So they think the investment was 35%. So there was a huge gap here. Okay, the return on investment of 10% for the European company and 35% for the venture capitalists. This gap was preventing the deal from moving forward, moving northeast. Okay? The European company wants the venture capitalists to still be involved in the company. So what can we do here? What's the solution? So discuss with your partner. Venture capitalists are going to be owning part of the company and the pharmaceutical company will be owning part of the company. Venture 
venture capitalist wants 35% rate of return. The pharmaceutical company wants 10% one. R, what's the meaning of the R? Return on investment. Like hurdle rate. Does anybody have any idea? How can we get a solution here? Uh, what if the venture company purchased a uh, small company, but they provide a uh, stock price, a uh, stock option? So the venture, first of all, the venture company, capital company, they already, they already have stock in the biotechnology company, right? Yeah. But the biotechnology company now wants to sell more stock. So if you had the venture capitalist, they used to own 100% of the company, right? Yes. Now it's going to be 50%, 50%. Venture capitalists and uh, so European, 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 company. European company, right? So the venture capitalists already own some stock, right? They want a higher rate of return. But what do you mean about stock option?
venture capitalist company rates? <laughs> Are they the impatient or patient person? They are impatient. They are impatient, right? So, we made a deal which gives the venture capitalists a larger share of the early profits in the first years. Okay? And the pharmaceutical companies get a higher share of later profits in the later years. Okay? So they want 35% profits now, they want 10% profits now, right? So of the profits, we're not going to split 50-50. You can get 70% of the profits and I'll just get 30%, right? Mm -hmm. Now, but after five years, then we switch around. So venture capitalists get more now, return now, and they get more return later. If you know we did the discount rate, right? So it, if I'm using a 35% discount rate, how much is $100 in 10 years worth now? Not very much, right? If I use a 10% discount rate, how much is $100 worth now? Still worth something, right? So when the venture capitalists look at the profits here in the long term, they think, anyway, that money is not worth much to me. Okay? I'm using a 35% discount rate. The European company sees the later money is more valuable. I'm just using 10% discount rate. So we can find a way in between. Okay, we can give a higher at the start to the uh, venture capitalists. So this is dovetailing again, right? Time-based dovetailing. Both of the parties can be happy. Both of them get better value. Okay. Do you have any question about this time one? So then tax, is tax exciting? <laughs> when you see the word tax, do you get excited? <laughs> Start smiling? Yes, it's tax. <laughs> yes, but tax is, is, is something which can be used for finding some advantage in a deal. So let's look at an example. If you buy a car in the US, you can't deduct the interest on the loan. Okay? You get a loan, you can't write it off against tax. But if a company borrows money to purchase a car, it can write it off against tax. Okay? So the corporation can then lease the car to the individual, resulting in a joint gain. So this was very common in the airplane industry. The airplane industry works a lot by leasing. Do you understand leasing? Yes. So I'm a company, I buy 10 airplanes, right? And I get a loan to buy the 10 airplanes. We already studied about debt and equity. What advantage is there of having debt? What advantage is there from using debt? Uh, they, they don't have the many money in now. Tax advantage, right? We can get tax advantage, one advantage. So we take, we take away the debt, the interest payment, before we calculate our profit. Okay? So we get some tax advantage. So the company gets a tax advantage from having debt. Right? So then they get the airplanes, they get their tax advantage from the airplanes, it's cheaper. And then they lease the airplanes to people. Okay? So, some companies do that, right? As with company cars. Company buys the car, or the director in the company. Let's say I own my own company. What should I do? Buy the car under the name of the company, or buy the car under my own name? Come on, company's name. Why? Tax advantage to company. I can, write, I can get a tax advantage from buying the car. I can write it off against my profits. Why? And I pay less tax. Okay? Here. And then I lease the car to myself. From the company. Okay, so a lot of people do that. <laughs> they have a small company. Maybe just they are the owner of their own company. Could be Budong San or restaurant or anything like that. Right? They buy the car by the company. It's a company car. The restaurant buys the car. And then, lease the car, 
back to myself, right? Or I can just lease a car from the company. I can lease a car from the company. I can also, leasing the car, write off the tax against the thing, right? Do you understand that advantage? Yes. If you have a restaurant, are you going to, or you run a business, are you going to buy the car yourself or buy the car on behalf of the business? Half of the business. Right? On behalf of the business. Uh, no. Depends on, the company can write it off against the profit. You make so much profit this year, you have to pay tax on your profit. Okay? But if you have no more cost, right, or more debt, you can use that as tax advantage. So you can, if you study accountancy, you can find out more detail about that. Law in Korea, right? Accountants are good at helping people to do those kinds of things. Do you want to be an accountant? <laughs> no. Why not? Too complicated. Too complicated. But it's a very stable job. People <laughs> always need accountants. Okay? So, uh, the after tax cost of the corporation borrowing to buy the car with the cost of the individual, if we compare the two of them, so the corporation's buying cost is lower than the individual's cost. These terms can be worked out that leave both parties better off. Okay? In this arrangement shares the tax saving resulting from the tax status difference between the two parties. So the, the company makes a tax saving and they share with the person. So if you go for a job interview, the company might offer you a company car. Why? Because they could give you the money but you, they get more advantage by giving company car. They can write off and get tax advantage, right? But you also get advantage of using the car. Okay, so when I was working in the company, I had a company car before. Okay, they gave me company car for them. Anyway, they get some advantage from the car, and I want to work for them because they give me a car. I get some bonus. Okay? So... Uh, can tax, we can, when we're doing deals, we can think about the tax. Differences in tax, right? Especially individuals and companies. Uh, liquidity, do you understand liquidity? So one company has a lot of cash, another company doesn't have cash. Okay? So the liquid firm can provide cash in return for profits. That's venture capitalists, right? Uh, if you look at, you can see a lot of programs on TV these days, uh, like Dragon's Den. Have you ever heard of Dragon's Den? Yes. Mm, you can improve your business English by watching that kind of program. Uh, what happens is the venture capitalists come together and they all sit down, four or five venture capitalists, and somebody comes in with their idea, right? And they pitch their idea. Do you understand pitch? This says worst pitch, worst ever pitch. <laughs> they make a presentation. These are the venture capitalists. Do they look like nice people? No. <laughs> <laughs> They're very My name is Bert Cuffins. sick, right? The company name is Flow Signals. I'm looking for fifty thousand pounds for ten percent of the equity. So he's looking for fifty thousand pounds for 10% equity in his company. Uh -huh. Do you think they'll give him that for 10% equity? No. Nope. Usually he starts at 10% and they finish at 50 or 60% for 30,000 pounds. Right, so it goes on, he pitches ideas. This is enough. Needs a 50,000 pound investment from the dragons. I've got patent. What have you got patent for? They ask some questions about patents and technology, right? Ever, ever, ever being used or They're really mean to him. Look, she says, tell me yes or no! Answer yes or no! People like watching the program because they can laugh at the people who's pitching their ideas. Sometimes they have ridiculous ideas. And these guys... And then I get serious. I have never met you in my life before. I am pleading with you not to do it. Won't affect She's pleading with him not to do it. She thinks it's a very bad idea, right? <laughs> 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 
She says it won't affect her life. Not only is she not going to invest in this idea, she's pleading with him not to do his idea. Right? <laughs> do you like that program? You can laugh at the people. You're laughing at him, right? Poor guy. He's just trying to start a company, right? Dragons walk away from the That's why they call them dragons. Fetus is now ready to have his say. Painful, but it is more than a word. Give it up. Give it up, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's why the video says worst ever pitch, <laughs> worst ever product. There's another right. application which is this also addresses. They're even laughing at the car. When you're in a car park and you're looking for the exit sign, the one thing you, the one thing you've got is that your eyes, so you look okay. around, you're looking for that, that yeah. arrow or something. And they're not, they're not impressed, right? He's talking about some kind of an arrow in the car park or something like that, right? So they're not going to make any offer in this case, but sometimes they make the offer and it's very, you know, I'll give you money. He needs money. He has no money, but he has an idea. He has no liquidity. They have a lot of money, but they don't have any ideas. Right? Who would you prefer to be? The person with money and no ideas, or the person with ideas and no money? Who do you want to be? I think everyone. No one Depends how good the idea is, right? If you're that guy with a bad idea, then just you're better off having the money, right? But People who have the money, they can get control of the company. So they buy your idea. Do they sell 100%? No, 50%, usually. Right? So we can do this kind of liquidity, we can make that kind of deal. So we can make structured settlements. Just we can do, think about all of these things, all of these differences that we talked about. Okay? So an example is personal injury claims. Do you understand personal injury claim? Personal injury means I got injured at work, I'm going to sue the university, right? There was some problem with the electric thing, I was plugging in, I got electric shock, I'm going to sue the university. Personal injury claim, right? So we, we try to make a deal between me and the insurance company, the insurance company of the university, we make a negotiation. In the US, most cases don't go to court. 90% of cases is solved by plea bargaining or negotiating, right, with the other side. Even the criminal case. Criminal case in the US, 90% of them don't go to the end of the trial. Don't go to trial. They're decided by negotiation between the guilty person and the police. Okay? So, a uh, personal and injury claims example, attitude towards time. Injured plaintiffs exhibit lower discount rates than those of the insurers. So, what should we do? So, I'm not very good at investing my money. So, I, my discount rate is 3%. If I invest the money in the bank, I'm going to get 3% a year. Right? But the insurance company is very advanced. They know they can invest in the stock market and invest in new companies and different things. They think they can make 10% a year. Okay? So they are going to pay me money. So we're asking, when should they pay me the money? So if I have a lower discount rate, this is me. I invest, put the money in the bank, I'll get 3%. Insurance company, invest the money, they'll get 10%. So should the insurance company pay me all the money now, or pay me the money later? Later, right? I'm happy to get the money later. Okay, I don't have a big discount rate. The insurance company wants doesn't want to pay the money now. They want to make 10% on their money and they're paying me later. Okay? What about tax status? If I get all the money now, I have to pay tax this year. But if I get annuity payments every year, I don't have to pay tax. So which one should we do? Annuity payment or cash settlement? Cash settlement, I have to pay a lot of tax. Annuity, I don't need to pay tax. I don't. So which one should we use? Annuity payment. Annuity payment. Okay, next one. Investment expertise. The insurance company has much better skills with investment. They're much better at investing the money. So should I get a cash settlement now, or the insurance company keep the money and pay me an annuity? The insurance company is better at investment than I am. Which is a better one? Second one, right? Forecasts. 
I think I'm going to live until I'm 100. I'm very healthy. Right? But the real, the real situation is, I got an electric shock from the thing. Electric shock affected my heart. <laughs> Probably I'm going to die younger. Right? So the real situation is that people who usually get this kind of injury shorten their life expectancy. So, which is better, an annuity or a cash payment? Which is better for me, which is better for the insurance company? I think I'm going to live a long time. The insurance company thinks I'm going to live a short time. Which payment is better for me? Long time. What one do I prefer? I think I'm going to live to 100. Cash payment now or payment every year? Payment every year. Right. Which one does the insurance company want? They think I'm going to die soon. Big cash payment now or payment every year? Every year. Payment every year, right? Maybe I'll die next year. We're going to look, right? of a heart attack, then they just paid me just for one year. Right? So people have different forecasts for the future. So we're both happy. Okay, risk. The plaintiff thinks that we might not be able to keep our money for our lifetime. Right? There might be some currency depreciation suddenly or a financial stock market crash. I could lose all my money easily. So again, annuity is better for me. Right? So if we look through all of these things, we're going to decide annuity is the best negotiation between me and the insurance company. Okay, so this is just, we can think about all of the di our differences in all of these things to help us to make the best agreement. Okay, so the, the summary on the differences. So rather than looking mainly for common ground and shared interests, which we did in win-win and mediation, Deal designers probe for differences. What is the difference of many kinds to create value? Okay. The very basic one we're going to do next week about is what is a high benefit for me and low cost for you? Okay. Something that's very cheap for me to give up but very valuable for you. That's the very basic one on differences. Okay. But there are also other differences too. Differences of interest, cost and revenue, Capability, forecasts, attitudes towards risk, attitudes towards time, tax status, and so on. Okay. So, do you have any question about uh, this dovetailing differences? We have different ideas. We have to make them fit together. They, it is possible that they can fit together. Okay. So then, let's uh, look at the negotiation that we didn't finish last time. Hmm? Yes, just the one that we didn't finish the last time. Then we'll just finish that and we we'll start a new negotiation next week. So, who was your partners? Not here? Uh -huh. Nobody's partner is here? Uh -huh. oh, okay. They're all gone. Mm, I see. <laughs> so. So if your partners are not here, then you can't do that one. So just, I don't want to move on too far because the students are at the job fair, right? So then we've just been there for today.